What influenced you to pursue a career in comedy? Um, I don't know. I kind of just started acting, and I've always kind of been like comic relief, even in like drama type plays, just because like my sense of humor, I guess, or my demeanor when I'm like messing around in a theater or whatever. Um, but yeah, since I was young, I was always getting those kind of roles to be like the comic relief or something like that. And then going through Nickelodeon and now SNL, it's kind of like pushed me into the comedy genre, like for real. So that's where I'm at now. But starting out, it was always like pretty serious drama stuff or whatever. So hopefully I can get back to that at some point. But I've always loved and overly respected comedy. So it's a pleasure to do it. Absolutely. How does your prior experience with sketch comedy compare to your current experience on SNL? Uh, I think Nickelodeon was good breeding ground for that. It taught us to be pretty fearless, you know what I mean, and kind of trust your instincts as far as like the reactions you're getting when you're doing stuff and you just hear people laughing from little things and it's like, oh, you know, keep that in the back of my mind or whatever. But also like trying voices and stuff like that because I didn't necessarily go to like an improv house to train for SNL. It was kind of like this was my training basically to not necessarily we had writers so they kind of wrote the characters but they would just give us like an outline and we would put like the meat on the bones if you will and uh, that was like good training for that and in SNL of course we had the we have the responsibility of writing so that's like my college where I learned how to like write sketches and come up with things from like scratch scratch but yeah Nickelodeon was good training. Um, with the sketches that you do in SNL how much input do you have as a writer? The ones that I write a hundred percent you know what I mean like I collaborate with a bunch of people because if I sat and typed by myself my shit would go in a bunch of different directions but we have an awesome writing staff and they're like really really smart young awesome dudes and um, you pitch them ideas and like they can either grab onto it and pull a sketch out of it or, or not you know what I mean and that's kind of like the battle we try to we're responsible supposedly for like two sketches a week so mm -hmm. that's what we try to do sounds rigorous yeah it's yeah. pretty rigorous but um, it's also the greatest payoff in the world when it goes well, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, man, that was like a fucking crazy climb because everything changes at the last minute too, so you never really know if it's gonna go that well again, even if it went well at Dress Rehearsal, it's not necessarily a guarantee because the audiences are different and people are different and the time is different. And like, the audience could be a little more tired or they could be a little more like snooty or they could be a little more like over energized so it just changes the vibe of things there's like so many factors so when it does go well the two times it's like that was awesome absolutely yeah. uh, when coming up with material for your stand-up where do you draw inspiration from right now my stand-up is like all about what I've done up to this point so far so it's kind of just been like a biography autobiographical type of situation but Nowadays, whenever I have an idea, whether it's from television or my wife saying something funny, I'll try to remember it, but I haven't necessarily worked it into my routine yet. Like, I don't have that discipline to like go to a comedy club and work out for a year and like build up like real set of just like observances and shit like that. <laughs> so, so far I've been kind of just doing my thing and then talking to the audience and like the hour goes by like that. But I would love to build up a set, but it takes like, Mm -hmm. real dedication and I listen to like you know Comedy Central Radio and comedy albums like all day long I've like listened to that more than music these days but only because I just I've always loved it and it's uh, a craft that has to be mastered in a certain way you know what I mean you can't just get up there and start talking about things that you think is funny it has to be formulated and uh, there's a very specific way to do it and everybody kind of has to find their style which is hard to do because I listen to Patton Oswalt and Louis C.K. and like all these people all day long and Mitch Hedberg and Richard Pryor and Jamie Foxx and Martin and like everybody has all this material but you have to figure out like your view on things like and how to communicate that to people in a way that's funny but it's also different so mm -hmm. there's just so many shoes out there that it's like well where are my shoes gonna fit so it's it's tough and it's a grueling type of thing but you have to do it the correct way, which is like going to those clubs and like working out in shitty places for like a long time. And then you know how different audiences react to whatever subject matter you're doing and shit like that. And you can build it out. It's cool to like listen to, you know, Comedy Central Radio or whatever, because you hear old bits in different places. Like you hear like a Chris Rock bit 
that's in a smaller place and it's going kind of different than it is when it's on TV, you know what I mean? And it's like, a, you know, 5,000 people listening to it or whatever. And it's, it's cool to see how he's just flowing through it, seeing like what gets any kind of response. And then you can remember when you saw it on television, like how it was. And it's like, it's crazy to like compare the two. It's really cool. Um, quickly going back to sketches, you're often the straight man in comedy, uh, the, sorry, the sketches, which is like the person with the straight face who's mm -hmm. kind of like the normal one, mm -hmm. sort of in the gilly sketches. Uh -huh. What is the key to playing that character and what is the key to just not breaking? I don't know what that key is because I break all the time. I think I do it when the camera's not on me. Like I get my laughs out and then when it's on me, I try to get professional or whatever. So. I'm usually like giggling throughout to kind of take the pressure off of not trying to laugh, you know what I mean? Like I go ahead and just like let myself laugh at things that are not being watched. And then um, past that, I don't know. We just try to keep it together, which is so hard working with like such, such talented people, you know? Absolutely. What advice do you have for those who are interested in pursuing a career in comedy, both in stand up and or in sketches? Fucking be prepared for a long road, you know what I mean? Especially when you're starting later in life. I started when I was a kid, so it was a little different. Like people were like a little like a little more lenient with, you know, how they responded to like whatever I've been presenting and, you know, a little more forgiving, I guess, because they're familiar with me. So they're more kind of into it when they first see me as opposed to like somebody going from scratch who's just got to make up an awesome joke for someone to laugh at, which is hard to do. So. I mean, you have to be really, really smart. You have to be, like, up on your shit, you know what I'm saying? And you have to figure out, like, what your style is and just be prepared for a long road of climbing and a whole lot of no's and, uh, like, you know, bombing. But they always say, like, bombing is the richest form of, like, growing, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because it's, like, the funniest thing that ever happened to a comedian when you think something is funny and it is not. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs>We're working on a lot of things all together as an executive team. It's like the best thing in the world. So much work goes into bid day. Uh, we started.